What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be kicking off the TypeScript course. And I always say that I'm excited for every single course, but I really am excited for this one because it's a blend of my two favorite languages, JavaScript and C Sharp and Java. It's got the type checking of C Sharp and Java, all of the scale of C Sharp and Java, coupled with the simplicity and the elegance of TypeScript. And the type checking is why people call it TypeScript, like really at the end of the day, but many people don't really understand like what is type checking. And this is just like a personal opinion of mine. This is not factual. Um, <clears throat> Type checking is very underrated in the world of software development. We do a lot of things to improve our code after, you know, we deploy to production or after, you know, we hit the compile button, but almost nowhere else in software development can you find something that will detect bugs in your code before you press the green button. And type checking is one of those things that it, it not only does it have other things that give you more productivity and more effectiveness as a software developer, but it also allows you to catch bugs before you even hit the compile button. And let's just like, I'll just give you like a visual representation. You may be saying like, Hey, Teddy, like I get this, but like, show me, you know, show me the money. Like, how does this actually work? And I'm pulled up. I'm in visual studio. You don't have to use visual. We're going to use visual studio code in the course, but this is just going to kind of demonstrate to you what this is actually doing and you don't actually need to code. So what type checking does, the first thing that type checking does is it allows you to look into stuff. Like you, like if you don't know what something is, like if you don't know what items is, you can look at it, you can hover over it and you can see what this is. You can see that this is a property and it is a type of, it's a Pokemon array. And not only that, but you can actually just right click stuff and go to into it. And in Chrome DevTools and a lot of a lot of JavaScripts, you can get some type of abstraction, but only in type checking can you just get that built in just awesome, really awesome type checking. And the other thing that a lot of these abstractions will not have is what will prevent bugs before you actually hit the compile button. So let's just say for some you know weird instance and this is actually an example of an angular project that i did what if i just changed this to string what would happen to like this model is basically saying that this property has to be a a, a number or a string throughout the whole entire uh actual program and what if i actually change this one to or uh, actually, I gotta change it to number. What if I actually change this type to number? Let's just say that from now on, the number actually has to be, or the type actually has to be a number. What would happen is you would go in here and you would get all of these squiggly marks saying that that is not possible. You need to change it back. As you can see, the type checking just picked that up. Sometimes it takes a little bit to actually pick it up, but the type checking picked it up and I can no longer put a string in there. And let's just say, somebody else in another part of the company was actually working on this and he changed it to a string and this model exists in maybe a hundred places in your software it will break and it will basically say hey you can't make those changes because you agreed to this in the actual model and that's kind of the beauty of type checking okay so the next thing that you want to do is you want to install typescript and i am going to take all of the hard work out of this. Basically, I've created a sandbox for you with the debugger. I've also got the VS Code debugger with it as well too, and I went the extra mile. There wasn't any other courses that had the type or the VS Code debugger in it, and if you like all my hard work, make sure to hit that like button because that really did take me a, a really long time to figure out how the VS Code debugger worked. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead. We're going to clone this repo into Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to show you how to do that in case you don't know how to do it. Okay. So Visual Studio taking forever startup and I have no reason or idea why. Okay. So let's go here and I'm going to CD into my projects folder and I'm going to git clone this into this repo. Okay, so let me see, and then I'm going to open it. Open folder. Oh, 
Okay. Now we are in here, and first thing that we want to do is we want to run npm install. So we're gonna go npm install, go ahead and install everything, and then I'm going to try to run it, see what we got. So global, concurrently it's not recognized, and I think I need to install concurrently. So I'm going to go over here and figure out how to install concurrently very quickly so go over here and pmg install concurrently so pmg install concurrently that was fast and okay taking taking quite a while here i might have to cut this part out okay so went ahead finished now let's go ahead let's try to run npm start again and it went ahead and it built okay so we've got that figured out Next thing that we want to do is let's just go ahead and I'll explain to you all of the actual fire file structure of TypeScript. This is a TS config file. It's essentially, it's a configuration file, um, but it's in JSON form. The only thing that you need to worry about is the root directory and the out directory as of yet. So out directory, when you compile TypeScript, what's gonna happen is it's going to convert it into JavaScript. And what you're going to see in here is you're just going to see a, uh, a JavaScript file pop up. And this was not here before. It was actually generated by uh, TypeScript. Um, and then right here, the source is the source. This is the only file that you really need to worry about. Other things, uh, package.json, if you want to come in here, if you forget how to actually run it, you can look in here. And these are all the scripts to actually run it. Um, if you want to install or if, you, if your debugger breaks, this is for debugging and this is just to start it. And here is Nodemon if you want to use Nodemon, but I currently just use concurrently that rhymed. And this is package.json. Don't really need to worry about that for now. But anyway, that is going to be the install in the brief introduction video. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.